All right, so we're going to look briefly at graphs in the next couple of videos. Um, later on, once we do get to calculus, we will be looking at techniques for producing graphs of functions. Um, the nice thing about graphs, it gives you a, a very concrete, visual way of understanding what's going on with the function, right? Um, sometimes when we write down something like, you know, even something as simple as a quadratic, you know, we write down this sort of expression. So y equals f of x, right? This is, uh, this is the sort of equation that you see which usually signifies we're dealing with graphs. And, and let's say that function is something like, let's say it's a quadratic, right? x squared minus 3x plus 2, something like that, okay? So just looking at this function, maybe, maybe you can't immediately tell me everything there is to know about that function, right? Um, we might want to know things like, you know, which, over which intervals is the function sort of, you know, increasing, you know, getting bigger as x goes up? Where is it decreasing? Where is it going down, right? Um, so we want to know things like that. We want to know, you know, is, is there a place where it kind of bottoms out? You know, does it, does it reach a maximum? There, there are lots of things like this that we might want to know about a function, right? And all this behavior is relevant, right? Because we're, we're using these functions to model things. We want to, you know, model, let's say, phenomena that vary over time, right? So we might be interested in things like, you know, maybe even something like a value of a stock. We want to know, is it increasing over time? Is it decreasing over time? Probably it's increasing some weeks, decreasing other weeks, right? Things tend to fluctuate, go up and down. Um, we want to know what's happening. And sometimes the easiest way to see what's going on is, is to look at a graph. Um, now, somehow as soon as you put this y in there, there's this understanding that, okay, if you just have f of x you know, in the formula, now we're talking about a function, right? But, but if I, instead of putting f of x, I put y, oh, now it's a graph. So, so why do we have this, this context? Why do we, um, as soon as there's a y in there, we're talking about graphs. Well, really what the graph is, and we can talk about this for any function, let's say f from, from a to b, um, really what it is, is it's the set of all ordered pairs a comma b. Um, so this belongs to a set called the Cartesian product. Um, you may not have seen this notation before, but don't worry about it because um, it's not going to come up that often. Um, but this is just a way of, of denoting the fact that we want a to be an element of a, we want b to be an element of b. So it's a set of all ordered pairs where the first um, element in that pair comes from a, the second one comes from b, uh, with the property that B is the element of B, of big B, that little a is assigned to by f, right? So it's a set of all B such that B equals f of a. So this is, this is where the idea of a graph comes in. Um, and, and the significance of x and y here is that these are the default variables when we're talking about things that live in what's often written as R2. So r times r, right? So elements here are of the form x comma y, where x and y are real numbers. And the important thing here is that this is an ordered pair. So there is this notion of first and last, right? Um, y comma x is not the same thing as x comma y when you're talking about ordered pairs. And we have this visualization, right? So we have this Cartesian plane. Okay. So this is an idea that goes all the way back to René Descartes, and it was actually quite a revolutionary idea at the time. So before Descartes, um, Geometry and algebra were, were very much 
different topics. They were somehow not unrelated, but you know, people tended to kind of do one or the other. We, they didn't really see connections between the two. Um, and Descartes realized that algebraic expressions like this, like setting y equal to f of x, could be visualized, could be viewed on a graph. And the Cartesian plane, this Cartesian coordinate system, is this grid system, which we all know and love, right? We draw a pair of axes. We label the horizontal axis as the x-axis. We label the vertical axis as the y-axis. And the, 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 the big revelation, the big idea, the big realization that Descartes had, and um, the, uh, the story is that he had this revelation while lying in bed watching a fly crawl along his ceiling. And he realized that he could describe the location of that fly if only he knew the distance from that fly to two of the four walls in his room, right? So we would have x being the distance measured from one side and y being the distance measured from the other side. And typically we would mark these distances on the respective axes. So we would mark x here, and we would mark y there, right? So, so once you have this idea of the Cartesian plane, well, now you can visualize a function. You can visualize the graph. You can plot the graph because for every ordered pair, for every x, y that satisfies this equation, you can plot a point, right? And, and so the, the most elementary thing that you can do here is you can just start choosing x values and seeing what the corresponding y value is, right? So we could, we could go through and say, okay, um, when x equals 0, uh, let's see, if x equals 0, y is equal to 2, right? So I kind of mark off, you know, 1, 2. And I plot a point, right? When x is equal to 1, I would have 1 minus 3 plus 2. I get 1, right? So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. And I plot a point, right? And so on. Actually, sorry, that's not even correct, is it? When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, right? When x is equal to 2, 4 minus 6 plus 2. Oh, when x is equal to 2, Again, um, y is equal to 0. Okay, uh, When x is equal to 3, you can work that out. y is going to be equal to 2 again. And, you know, but then you say, well, you know, it's not going to be this, like, you're not going to draw straight lines in there. Right? You want to you get a better idea of the shape, so you start filling in more points. You might say, well, what happens at 1.5? You find out that there's a y value down here, and so on. And eventually, you can fill in all the points, right? and you produce your graph. You get this, this graph of a parabola, um, right? And you can't individually plot every point on the graph because, of course, there are infinitely many of them. Um, and, 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 you know, it becomes pretty inefficient to use this technique of just plotting points, right? So you want to develop techniques. You want to come up with with methods for quickly producing these graphs so that you can use that graph to understand the function. You don't want to sit there generating point after point after point after point. Um, well, unless you're a computer, right? If you're a computer, you can quickly generate enough points, you know, within the sort of pixel density of your screen to, to produce something that looks good to the human eye, uh, but it's not a very practical process for humans. So we want to look at some other options. Um, most of those options are going to come later on once we get into, into calculus, right? In calculus, we're going to learn techniques for understanding graphs of functions. Uh, for now, we're going to look at a few basic examples and a few basic principles to understand uh, graphs of some simple functions.